introduction. It is my pleasure to introduce uh, my two good friends, uh, Caterina Ponto and uh, Marta, Lope, <coughs> Marta Perez Lopez, uh, that will uh, uh, present to us uh, the tale of EGG4 related orbital disease and Graves orbitopathy. Please, Caterina and Marta. Um, dear colleagues, dear organizers and friends, I feel very honored to be invited to this webinar. And especially, I'm very happy to give this talk together with my dear friend, Marta. And the title of our talk is The Tale of IgG4 Related Orbital Disease and Graves Orbitopathy. And I have the easier part because I will show you a very instructive case of our multidisciplinary orbital center. So this is a 55-year-old patient with Graves disease and associated orbitopathy. He was a severe smoker, and when he came, he was hyperthyroid, although he had already received radioactive iodine. And as you can see on the photos, he had a severely inflammatory active disease with a cast of six points. And fortunately, at this point of time, he did not have any signs for optic neuropathy. So what did we do? We gave him antithyroid drugs. We told him to stop smoking and we prescribed him intravenous steroids, which he should receive by his uh, family doctor for 12 weeks. And then we wanted to see him afterwards. But it turned differently. He already came back after three weeks because he had uh, recognized a severe deterioration of his visual acuity. And uh, this was really um, objectively true. He also had a relative efferent pupillary deficit. And because we suspected optic nerve compression, we performed some imaging. And in the MRI, we did not find a direct compression of the nerve, but a stretching of both optic nerves due to severe exophthalmos. So we took the patient in into a hospital where he received high doses of intravenous steroids every second day, and we did further blood tests. So in the serum, we found very high levels of thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins and also high levels of IgG4. And after having had eight more infusions of methylprednisolone, there was no significant improvement. The disease was still very active. The orbits were very tight and optic nerve dysfunction was still present. And therefore we discussed what to do next. And in order not to lose more time, we decided for orbital decompression surgery. Those, this is the finding again before surgery. And this is four weeks afterwards. And you can see immediately that the disease had completely inactivated. And in parallel to this, there was a complete recovery of optic nerve dysfunction. So in the workup, we discussed possible risk factors for his poor response to the standard therapy. He was a male, uh, he had male sex. So this is already one risk factor you cannot influence. He was a smoker and it's sometimes tough to tell patients to stop smoking. He had received radioactive iodine and he also had high levels of specific autoantibodies. He had an orbital compartment syndrome or what we call orbital congestion. And he had high levels of IgG4 in his serum. I have to say when I did this decompression surgery, I also performed a biopsy of orbital fat and of his enlarged um, lacrimal gland, but this was negative for IgG4 positive plasma cells. So he only had a positive serology. So IgG4 is what we are talking about today. And therefore we have to say that there really seems to be a coexistence of GO and IgG4 related orbital disease in some patients. And what we should ask ourselves is, this a new subtype of GO and when should we measure IgG4 in Graves orbitopathy patients? Should we do it in all patients? Should we do it if they don't respond 
to the standard therapy? Should we do it in patients with optic nerve dysfunction? And <clears throat> should we measure IgG4 in the tissues when we perform surgery in these patients? So these are the questions I'm now asking my colleague Marta, and I'm really sad not to be able to call her up to join me on the stage, but I'm very excited um, about her answers that she will give us now in the more scientific part of our talk. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Marta Perez, and I will try to give answer to some of the questions that came up after Catherine Esponto's presentation. IgG4 related disease is a fibrous inflammatory disease characterized by high serum IgG4 levels with a typical histology where we find IgG4 positive plasma cells and a lymphocyte infiltration and swelling in different organs. Recently, it has been described that a small proportion of patients with Graves disease present with high serum IgG4 levels. And those patients tend to be uh, males they have a low echogenicity in the thyroid gland, they have a good response to the antithyroid drugs, and they tend to become hypothyroid with the treatment. Those patients also have a higher prevalence of orbitopathy compared to the group of IgG4 negative patients. Uh, for some authors, uh, IgG4 high levels would be a risk factor to develop Graves orbitopathy. Finally, um, up to 37%, but around 20%, depending on series, of patients with Graves or Bitopathy have high IgG4 serum levels. And those patients tend to be younger. They have a stronger family history of autoimmune thyroid disease. And there's a good correlation between IgG4 serum levels and TRAP levels. Those studies have also shown that in those patients with higher IgG4 levels, um, it's also high the um, CAS clinical activity score is higher and they have a more severe course of the disease. In this paper where um, it was analyzed the clinical and radiological features of great orbitopathy patients with IgG4 high levels, the authors found that all patients were active, that they had a bilateral orbital involvement and quite a symmetrical disease. And only in one patient, infraorbital nerve enlargement was found. So attending to the data we have so far, we could guess that we are facing a new subtype of Graves' disease and Graves' orbitopathy with high serum IgG4 levels that may not be part of the spectrum of IgG4-related disease, as in any of those patients, other organs have been involved. However, to confirm this, we need more studies assessing the histology of the orbital tissues of this subgroup of patients there has been some research assessing orbital inflammatory disease uh, histology, and in any case, in thyroid eye disease patients, IgG4 plasma cells were found. But in those studies, the tissues were taken from the orbital um, fat, and we know that it would be more accurate to target extraocular muscles or lacrimal glands if we want to evaluate IgG4 cells. Therefore, in one hand, we would have IgG4-related orbital disease, that clinically will affect um, lacrimal glands causing a bilateral enlargement, extraoscular muscles, mainly the lateral rectus, and could also um, cause a infraorbital nerve enlargement. In a high percentage of these patients, we also find other organs involved and clinical manifestations. In another hand, we would have a subgroup of patients with great orbitopathy and high serum IgG4 levels that would be mainly active patients with bilateral and symmetrical orbitopathy. And we could also find both conditions coexisting in the same patient, as we know that many autoimmune disorders overlap. So to differentiate between both conditions, an orbital biopsy would be needed. And in, in the first case, we would find IgG4 positive plasma cells that would be characteristic of the IgG4 related orbital disease. And further studies will have to describe what is the histological features of the Graves orbitopathy patients with high IgG4 uh, levels. To conclude, measuring IgG4 levels could be helpful in new diagnosed Graves disease and Graves orbitopathy, as it looks like it's, there's a subgroup of patients with Graves orbitopathy and high IgG4 levels. And those levels correlate with the activity and severity of the disease. So 
we need to define the clinical significance of these high IgG4 uh, levels, but we could think, for example, of a different response to treatment in those patients, as for example, happens with the rituximab. Finally, to differentiate between both entities, especially in those patients with an atypical course or some features that overlap with IgG4-related orbital disease, a biopsy is needed to differentiate both of them. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, uh, Caterina and Marta, for this uh, uh, bright and uh, very straightforward presentation on uh, a very actual uh, topics.